Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today we're lucky enough to have Alistair Shermer here, reliving his wonderful workshop speech from this year's XRF um, RecTech Best. So today I will be running through candidate experience, employee value proposition, and how to give the best recruiter experience possible. Um, at the end of this, we will send you the recording and the slides, so don't worry about taking too many notes. And be sure to ask questions through the um, webinar platform so that we can answer them at the end. All right, thank you, here's Al. Thank you, Rochelle. Uh, so uh, thank you all for coming along, and I think we will have some other people who will be joining periodically uh, throughout, no doubt. Um, so um, by way of introduction, um, my name's Alastair Shermer. Uh, I'm the uh, Head of Client Solutions and Technology Partnerships here at Livehire. Um, I've been in the business for about five years, so very close to the uh, the launch and inception uh, of the business. Um, so I've uh, seen a lot of our growth and journey over that time. Um, in terms of what I wanted to cover today, um, so we've got about 30 or so minutes together, um, so there's quite a lot that I, I want to go get across. Um, but really where I wanted to start was about, you know, the changing paradigm within uh, the way that talent is actually being uh, processed within the talent acquisition space itself, uh, and also how that is evolving and the importance around that. Uh, then I want to talk a bit more about um, Lifeline and what are we actually doing to, uh, to speak to that changing of paradigm. Um, I want to share some um, sourcing best practice, um, but also, you know, why talent communities matter uh, connected to that sourcing best practice as well. Uh, in there, I'll talk uh, about some uh, tips and hints. Um, so hopefully there's some good takeaways uh, for you from that regard. Um, then I wanted to actually share with you um, a bit more around talent pooling. And, um, uh, you know, really the key thing around talent pooling is around how it can actually genuinely help around talent visibility, but importantly, um, try and change the conversation internally within your organisation, particularly between the resourcing team and the hiring managers. Um, it would be remiss of me not to kind of mention AI as the kind of the, the hot topic, uh, you know, around the world at the moment, but I really wanted to talk about um, how AI and uh, machine learning works in the Wi Fi platform, but also some work that we've actually got in place right now uh, with an integrated partner, HireChill. And then I really want to close out around talent engagement and some best practice tips around that as well. Um, so, so to launch into it, um, you know, I think this is for, the, for those who are on the webinar and those who may watch this later on, um, you know, really there's a change that's happening in the marketplace and it's actually been a change that's been going on for a while. And this isn't actually just reserved to the recruitment space. Um, it is actually a change that's happening across the market, uh, which is around, really around um, human-centred design thinking um, and really pushing the power back to the consumer. So if you think about the layer of that in our world, that's really about candidate centricity. So it's actually be, um, really thinking about the experience, you know, for the user. Uh, and thinking about what that actual interaction actually looks like. So if we overlay that uh, and we start to think about those changes and therefore the expectation of, uh, of users and consumers in a marketplace, um, we need to think about what does that mean uh, into our world. And so really, it is actually changing a lot of things. So when we think about sourcing, traditionally sourcing has been very focused around advertising, um, but now it's really shifting towards magnetizing. And that's really attached to how do you build out your brand proposition and particularly to focus around um, EVP as well. Um, so it's really about um, leveraging um, you know, those stories uh, and making sure that you build uh, equity uh, around your uh, organizational brand. Um, but then even then at a recruitment level, um, you know, it is actually about a little less about procurement these days, but more about engagement and conversation. Um, and so typically, and I'll talk a bit more to this later on, a lot of systems have been architected historically around a process and a procurement process, um, but where the, the world has moved to and is really now these days is actually centered around engagement and centered around how those conversations actually facilitate to actually get to the hiring outcome. Um, and then if you think about marketing, so marketing, um, you know, obviously brand is really important and branding is really important, but actually people are looking for some level of experience when they're connecting you know, with that brand now as well. Um, so that's really, really an important uh, factor that's playing out. So there's definitely a lot of evolution that's flowing through off the back of this real movement, um, you know, to the candidate. So we think about live hire and just to kind of share, um, you know, our mission um, and, you know, what we're all about. Um, so our, our mission is really to empower the flow of the world's talent into the best companies. 
Um, I'll explain a bit more about what that means, but it's a pretty lofty um, uh, mission. Um, and really the empowerment piece uh, is a key part to that in addition to the flow part there as well. So why don't I kind of dig a bit deeper into that and dive into that particular point. So for us, um, you know, we um, are very, very focused around, you know, how can we reimagine uh, the way that talent acquisition, talent acquisition works from a system perspective and from a process perspective. So really the traditional way of recruitment, and this is probably nothing that you guys don't know, but, you know, has been very centered around everything revolving around a requisition. Requisition gets approved, created, you go and advertise that requisition um, on your career site, et cetera, out of market, people apply for that job, you actually review those applications. In the review part, there's actually a heavy lot of administration work that goes into that because you're having to process, you know, tons and tons of applications. And then the output of that is actually all of those people who actually submitted are actually getting a, um, well, only one person is getting the outcome, which thereafter, the others are actually being rejected uh, as part of that. So um, I think everyone's very conscious and aware of um, the impact that rejection can actually have associated to your, uh, your organization's brand and how that can actually uh, affect their own personal lives as well. So, you know, with that in mind, how do we start to actually reduce the, um, uh, the impact of rejection, also reduce that weight of administration as well? And so we really were conscious about thinking about designing a process that works for tens of thousands of people, um, as opposed to just a process that has been designed uh, with the procurement stakeholders uh, in mind. And that's not disregarding the importance of a process uh, and the importance of how you run and manage an organization. But ultimately the new paradigm is, is really a focused around how do you attract the right talent? And then when you attract the right talent, this is associated to when there is a need and also when there is not a need. So when they're actually thinking about your brand, how do they get on your radar? At that point, it's really about them connecting uh, to your organization. Uh, and at that point, when they connect, you really wanna to get to know them a lot more as well. And one of the unique parts, and I'll talk a bit more about this next, um, about live hire is got a lot of deep data uh, on people. And then the, the benefit of that deep data is we can actually accurately, through a lot of our machine learning and AI, segment that audience. And therefore, once a lot of segmentation can occur, a lot of the matching and suggestion can happen, which creates greater efficiency which actually means you're gonna have faster hiring outcomes uh, at the same time. And so the, the knock-on effect of that is clearly gonna be less administration and less rejection because you're dealing with the people who are actually right and more specifically engaged with your brand. So what have we been doing uh, to respond to this change in terms of the candidate centricity and what have we actually been building? So really what we've been focused on is actually creating a new category um, and creating a new category around private talent communities centered around a unified profile that the candidate actually owns. Um, importantly though, as part of that, we need to pay off um, the ability for somebody to be able to manage that process. So this is going back to that point that process is actually very important, but the way that the engagement occurs and the connection occurs is, uh, you know, is really where like, that, that shift is. So, so LiveHire is a talent acquisition platform you know, for that candidate-centric world. Um, within that, we have um, one environment, whether it be associated to that there is a job, so we can um, our careers websites for organizations, uh, run the ATS process through our platform as well. But importantly, likewise, um, have talent communities where people can connect to your brand and your organization when they're actually thinking about you or you're actually sharing content and messaging out in market. Um, we've, we've got really strong engagement capability built in through the platform um, and we call it humanized engagement. We do that for a reason because we do want um, any communication and messaging that happens through the platform to feel like it's actually you're communicating with a human, as opposed to it's just an automated system request um, or system communication. And importantly, you want that to be really two way, uh, but I'll go into more about that a little bit later on. Um, we've spent a lot of time around uh, talent visualization and talent pooling, um, but importantly matching within there as well. And importantly needed to um, once again, recognize that um, to run your process, you really need to still have that ATS capability built into the system but importantly, when we've built our ATS capability in our system, we want to make sure that it's integrated in terms of how you actually engage with talent and then think about um, uh, being much more proactive in the way you work. Um, there's a lot of AI built into the platform. We've got, uh, we're an API based platform as well. So we have a number of integrations and they're continuing to build that ecosystem out. Um, we actually have a lot of data on people so we can unify that data to get really powerful insights. And we're a really strong and secure platform and we take this incredibly seriously. 
So to really quickly describe a talent community. So um, a talent community is really important. If you think about this, it's a little bit almost like your own little private LinkedIn in some respects. So it's about what's the destination that you can actually send people to when there is a need or when there is not a need. But importantly, what you really want to make sure you do is track where are those people actually um, you know, connecting with your organization from uh, as well. So Live Hire has unique capability around being able to, uh, to track uh, where people are connecting with you from. Um, a lot of our customers will typically look to do a re-engagement exercise um, that's associated to people who've engaged with your brand or applied to your organization in the past. Uh, and it's really about building up a, a, a group of individuals and group of people who actually are um, essentially wanting to be on the radar of your organization, either by applying for a job or actually connecting uh, to your talent community, but all most importantly coming into one central destination uh, where all of that is housed. I mentioned before that um, you know the unified profile was, a, was an interesting unique character uh, or characteristic of live hire. And it's actually quite unique for live hire from a global perspective. So essentially what this means is that when somebody does connect to a talent community, they're creating a profile. Um, now in that profile, we capture over 90 points of data um, on an individual. Um, now the reason why we're able to capture so much data is that it's because it's a private connection. So it's actually private between the individual and that organization. Now, and because it's private, people feel much more comfortable in sharing information at a preference level. So for example, what type of their salary expectations. It might be what their actual availability is, whether they're happy to relocate, um, you know, what type of jobs are they actually looking for. So they start to actually um, profile out, both in terms of skills, experience, preference, uh, and, and categorise a lot of that data, so therefore the system can actually um, work really powerfully. But what makes it even more unique is that that person was to actually apply to a job where we were powering that experience for another organisation, they can reuse that profile. They don't have to start from scratch again. Now, the benefit of that is that they actually update information about themselves. It might be their availability or their experience. It will instantly update for every organization that they're likewise connected privately with as well. And the important factor here is that the, the candidate in the middle can control all of the connections and uh, the organizations they're connected to and that relationship, but the organizations have no visibility on what other organizations that individual is connected to as well. So the importance of the privacy is, is very, very key. To close out on this particular point, I thought I'd share with you just some interesting data points as well. Um, and this is particularly interesting, and this, and this data is essentially across our entire ecosystem. So if we look at um, the ability to communicate that humanized engagement I was referring to earlier, we're actually seeing really strong and powerful fast turnaround times around um, how people actually interact. So the medium response time is 52 minutes across all of our customers, and this covers industries from retail to mining to construction to, hospital, uh, to uh, healthcare. Um, and beyond. So really strong uh, ability to turn around engagement through our instant messaging. Um, we have a, a unique capability in the platform for targeted job invitations. So think about this in your own personal experiences like a virtual tap on the shoulder or a headhunt. Um, so we tend to find that about 27% of the people who do get approached instantly will come back with a acceptance of that and go straight into the shortlist. So really you're, you're going out to people who actually you know want to work for you and are actually automatically looking at that opportunity and say, yep, I want to be involved in that particular one. We're seeing a direct uh, impact on time to hire as, that, uh, as a result of that. So um, the medium time to respond is actually 17, minute, uh, 17 days. God, it'd be great if it was 17 minutes, wouldn't it? Uh, no, 17 days across the board in terms of our entire ecosystem. And I'll talk to it a little bit later, but in terms of the importance of diversity, um, we tend to find 56% of all hires that happen through the platform are, are, uh, are female as well. Um, but I'll explain a bit more around how talent communities are playing a role in actually uh, enabling that. So why don't we start delving into that a little bit further <clears throat> and um, the reason why you know, taking an always open approach to talent is key to an effective sourcing strategy. Because really what it does do is helps enable diversity, brand fit, um, you know, flow of talent, but also mobility in your organisation. So I was keen to share with you um, initially some best practice tips around sourcing. Um, and then I want to talk to you uh, on that point I was making before around diversity associated with talent communities as well, just to explain and then pad that out a little bit further. So from a best tips on sourcing perspective, um, there's a lot of people on the, uh, on the webinar today that have got no doubt a lot of experience uh, in recruitment. 
So this is by no way an exhaustive list, but it's really about trying to refine it down to some best practice that we see from our customers um, that are using, uh, using our product. Um, so the first point would be is around let them connect um, when they're actually interacting with your brand. So um, typically you tend to find the doorway into an organization when it is the recruitment process is normally that of an application. So really what you wanna be thinking about is um, how can you allow for an opportunity for them to connect with you when they're thinking about you? Um, which is a nice flow on to the next point, which is around call to action. So if you're putting content, you're putting information out there, whether it be on a social perspective or offline, um, you really wanna make sure that you've got some call to action for them to actually connect with your brand. And therefore you can really pay off that hard work and effort that you're putting out there. You can see some examples on the right hand side there across some of our customers where they're really using people stories uh, as part of that and sharing those experiences. But importantly, having a call to action to actually join the talent community as well. It's a softer call to action. Um, if you were to say, um, come and check out our careers website for opportunities we have today, your downstream challenge there is that if they go to your careers website and they're, uh, let's say that they're a marketing manager and there are no marketing manager jobs, then you've got a challenge now around talent leakage um, because essentially they back out because there's no opportunity for them to actually get on your radar. So it's important to have that call to action, but have their ability for them to connect with you and leverage those people stories. The other point I would make would be around know your audience. And this is a really important factor because when you think about um, branding, you think about sourcing strategy, you need to think about your segment and your, your category that you're going after and know where they hang out and have a strategy uh, around that as well. Um, leverage your assets. Um, so, and that's both online and offline. You'll see an example there from Omedia. Um, for those who don't know Omedia, they run you know, uh, a lot of the billboards um, and digital signage, et cetera around Australia, so they actually leverage a lot of their own assets. But the same goes for retailers. You've got bricks and mortar stores that you can easily be leveraging. Um, we've seen customers that have actually given uh, retail store managers VIP cards to actually hand out to people with tracking codes on those and QR codes <clears throat> to be able to allow them to actually get on the radar and make them feel special um, to connect to their uh, brand. Importantly, track it. Um, there's no point in doing all this great work if you don't know where it's coming from because you want to make sure you reinvest in the areas that are making sense. And um, I speak to a lot of customers around this, but workforce planning. Uh, if you can be thinking about workforce planning and know where it is your business needs to be going, and this, this is an area that a lot of companies um, struggle with, they want to do it, but just don't um, end up doing it. It's important to make sure that you're ready for that. And, uh, and as a flow on from there, we can really start to build out your referral networks. We've got some clients that are really uh, just trying to push this concept of talent scouting. Um, as well, which is really a play off the sporting areas. To roll on from that, um, just to pick up on the diversity piece. So um, this is obviously a, a very, very important topic. Um, and I think the key thing here is that, you know, for organisations that are diverse, um, they tend to absolutely outperform their competitors. So the more you're thinking about um, opening the doorway and allowing for talent to connect with you, it is actually going to give you a greater opportunity by which to actually build out um, a diversity within your organization, both at a gender and also a cultural level as well. Um, at a gender level, um, just a couple of points there um, is that, and there's a lot of Harvard research to support this, but, but the key thing here is that um, you know, females typically, and this is uh, much better than uh, most blokes on this, is that you know, they will be a lot more conscious around not wanting to waste their time but importantly would prefer to build a relationship uh, with an organization as well. So hence the importance of a talent community allowing that doorway to build that relationship. And you do wanna make sure that you can connect um, through to that opportunity, which really when we, our research has shown us, when you've got more people coming through the top of the funnel and particularly at a, at a gender level, um, you tend to see a same um, proportion of people moving through the pipeline. Um, so this is really about people connecting to a talent community uh, we're seeing roughly the same numbers uh, for organisations, but that correlates beautifully uh, through the pipeline, through talent pooling uh, for job applications and hiring outcomes as well. But the key takeaway here is um, if your top of the funnel is supporting um, diversity initiatives, um, you want to make sure that they can actually get on your radar when they're actually interacting with you. Feels like I'm moving through at this pace, and I am because I know we've got 30 minutes, but um, I wanted to pick up and talk a little bit about AI. And um, I think the key thing here I want to talk about is more specifically AI assistants. Um, so they're really commonplace 
uh, in society now. And you know, for those of you who use you know Uber or Google Maps or anything like that, there's it's all sitting there behind the scenes. But the key thing here really is it's just about making you better and 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 quicker and more efficient at what you do and freeing you up to actually focus in on value adding uh, activities and work. So in Live Hire. Um, We've got a lot of uh, machine learning and AI built into the platform. Um, we've got this within talent pooling, but also in, uh, within our jobs for suggested matches as well. So at the job level would be as soon as you uh, approve and open a job, instantly the platform is going to identify talent um, within your talent community and talent pools that would be suitable for that job um, within a matter of seconds. The same goes within talent pooling as well. And so within talent pooling, we've actually taken an attribute approach to talent pooling where you define the criteria that you actually value for that particular talent pool. And then um, we look at all the data sitting within those profiles to actually identify qualified matches. Um, so with that in mind, I was keen to uh, talk to you very quickly about uh, one of our partners, Hyatchul. Um, so when we've been looking at the development of our technology and where we want to take it, we've been conscious of the fact that the data, particularly around matching, is only going to be as strong as the data you've actually got access to. And so if you've got a community of people that are engaged with your brand, and we've got a lot of data on people, um, our matching capability will look at those individuals, but at the same time as a resourcing function, you want to be thinking further afield than that as well, if there are people outside of your community that you want to be um, identifying. And so we've actually gone into partnership with Hyachill. And Hyachill, um, for those who aren't aware, um, is a US-based AI sourcing product. It's used by over 80,000 recruiters uh, across the globe and uh, recently announced there's about 1,000 recruiters here in Australia um, that are using it as well. Um, but really, uh, what, it, uh, what it allows for is essentially they've got 700 million profiles um, within their product. And the result of that is that essentially the um, you can develop projects within there, it'll identify talent across the globe, um, pulling on over 30 different sourcing channels to really quickly identify the quality talent across the globe, both locally um, and, and across the globe, that would be relevant for those particular um, job families or areas you're searching for. What they've shared is the results of that, you're getting about a 10 times faster sourcing result, um, and that they're saving up to 56 hours of time per hire. So I wanted to share with you uh, a video and just to walk you through how it actually works on our product and what we've actually integrated. Now, this is actually something that PyChill developed for us as an API. So when you go onto our product, you can actually uh, create a talent pool. And in doing so, you would actually begin to enter those attributes that I was referring to before. Now, this is where we're actually defining the information we want to tell our system to go and find and match talent for. So instantly, it'll begin to be searching for that talent and then it'll actually start to throw up different suggestions of people who would be relevant for that opportunity. At that point, as a recruiter, you want to look at those particular suggestions and make an informed call. So you may look at Alexander and say, yep, Alexander looks interesting for this opportunity. I'm going to actually put him directly into the talent pool. And likewise, look at Stephen as well and then make a conscious decision as to whether you want to or not. Now, you may exhaust that initial list. Um, but then you may want to go externally to the market to actually see what opportunities there are as well. And this is where our integration with Hyachill um, comes into play. So you can generate a project directly through Live Hire, which will instantly um, copy that information and push that across into the Hyachill platform. You can flip straight over into the Hyachill platform, and then that will essentially create a project based on the whole bunch of information that you've actually pulled across from your talent pool. And this will likewise be associated to jobs. From here, you'll be presented with an initial shortlist of people and then identify whether those people are a good fit or not a fit. And so what you're doing here is you're essentially training the system to actually identify the talent that would be useful for you. And then it'll actually go external to that and search the rest of the globe in terms of matching profiles. And from here, you can begin to start to actually look at people that would be right for your organization, both that are a good fit, but then you can um, the, tell the machine to keep learning around those people that are also aren't a fit. And those people can be synchronized and pull instantly back across into your talent pool as well, saving you a lot of time and a lot of effort. Make sure I can actually move on to my slide. Oh, thank you. Sure. Okay, so um, I just want to finish off on engagement. Uh, so um, we all know that engagement is incredibly important, uh, and you know I kind of like to think of that as like it's like it's the new black. 
Uh, so really, it's about um, making sure that you're having conversations. And this is the world that people live in right now. They want more of a Facebook Messenger-like experience than just smashing them with emails. And so we've done a bit of analysis in terms of what we see as best practice across the uh, platform. And what we've actually found is that 50% um, of people respond to uh, a personalized message versus only 17% uh, of people who respond to bulk templated communications. So think about the impact of that within the TA space. So typically you would have been used to actually having a template that you use constantly. It feels very system generated and pushing out one way through email. The, move, the world's moving toward about how do you have more personalized engagement so that way it feels more relevant. But the key thing there also is that it's short and punchy and get to the point. Um, so, which speaks to the next point, which is really about 60% of people respond to a short message versus only 25 to a long message. Now on LiveHire, we've got an integrated instant messaging platform which actually notifies the person both via email and SMS. And so we tend to see really strong engagement coming through the SMS channel. And that's where that short punchy message is actually really, really important for that cut through. Um, we had a look at some of the, uh, the best uh, response rates for organizations and uh, you know, our, our, our leading organizations are getting about a 67% response rate for all engagement, all messaging that they do on the platform. And that's both at a one-to-one uh, -one and a bulk uh, level as well, which is great. Um, just to pick up on that SMS point, um, you know, we tend to find that the response time for SMS is uh, it's 14 minutes uh, on average versus that of 91 minutes uh, in email. So in a world of uh, on demand, um, and particularly when you're under pressure to recruit, um, you want to make sure your team is around quickly and making sure that people are responding fast as well. I spoke to it earlier in terms of the median response time across the platform. Median response time is that of, you know, uh, 52 minutes, which actually collects both uh, all forms of communication. And as far as some best tips uh, on that, um, you know, I'd say um, people want to interact in a more natural way. Um, so keep it punchy. Um, make sure that um, uh, when they're engaging with you, you're not kind of forcing them through a portal which they have to log into as well, because they'll typically back out of that. Uh, I know with, uh, for me, when I get a message from Airbnb, I've got to click on a link, I've got to go log back into Airbnb to actually view that message. So for me, I find that real pain. Um, they really want to know that it comes from a human. And I know it feels like a really stupid, question, uh, stupid point, but that's actually a really important factor. Um, and, and really make it relevant to them as well. And also have a schedule around how you want to engage, particularly with those uh, critical job families. And so um, I really kind of want to leave you with a, a number of takeaways because I'm just conscious of the time. Um, so probably the couple of takeaways I would say here is one is that, um, you know, talent acquisition has really changed. Uh, and, you know, it's really very much focused around engagement and focused around the candidate. Um, also, I would say that, uh, you know, really make sure you think about your brand and how you can leverage that. Um, but importantly, have somewhere to send them. Um, so that way, when they are interacting with you, you can capture them at the right time. Uh, diversity really matters, so find a way to open that doorway and get them to connect. Um, and talent pooling can really have a massive impact on your organisation. And one thing I probably didn't share that we've seen with organisations is really around how it can open up the conversation with a hiring manager, particularly when you can visualise that talent more effectively. You can pay off the actual work that you've been doing and talk about um, potential people that would be suitable for workforce planning, uh, requirements, but also um, you know unique skill sets you're always looking for. AI assistants, they're here, yeah. So embrace it. Um, they're here to help, um, but really just think about the role that AI plays in your role when you think about um, where you want to free up time and effort. And probably the last point, as I was making before, you know, engagement's key, and after all, it's a relationship, and relationships are two way. So think about that in your engagements with people. So that's the end of my webinar, but I think there was a quick question um, that we, uh, we saw from one of the uh, participants, which was, uh, have we seen this being used effectively within recruitment agencies? Um, so just to pick up that question, the majority of our customers are, uh, are direct um, corporate organizations. Um, we do a lot of work with uh, RPO customers uh, as well. Um, we're seeing a lot of really strong um, impact within the RPO space in terms of uh, efficiency gains. Um, we haven't, um, to date, been targeting the recruitment agency space um, to go after, um, to use our platform. Um, but definitely as far as the, um, the RPO space is concerned, um, yet yeah, very strong um, engagement, very strong uptake um, where they're performing that role uh, in terms of running that process. 
Great. Um, so uh, um, if there's no other questions, um, we may uh, conclude the webinar um, here, but I'd just like to thank you all for joining uh, and thank you for taking time out of your day. Um, this session will be recorded and uh, will be sent out and distributed um, as well. And uh, I'll likewise do the same uh, with the presentation deck. Um, so uh, thanks, very, uh, thanks very much again and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.